New Five, a former personal cameraman from Megan the Stallion claims he was forced to watch the musician have sex with another woman in a car. Emilio Garcia is suing the artist, accusing her of creating a hostile work environment. Misconduct allegedly took place while she was on tour in Spain in 2022. Garcia says he was fired last year after he complained about the labor and wage violations. So here's the scoop from L.A. A former cameraman for Megan Thee Stallion, Emilio Garcia, has filed a lawsuit claiming he was stuck in a car with Megan while she hooked up with another woman right next to him. This happened in Spain, and after that, things got really uncomfortable for him. Emilio said that after the car incident, Megan straight up told him never to talk about what he saw. He also claims she started throwing fat-shaming insults at him and just treated him differently. He described the her as so intense that it made his work life unbearable, creating a really toxic environment. Now he's taken his complaints to court, saying this whole situation made it impossible to keep working under those conditions. Megan's lawyer, Alex Spiro, responded by saying this lawsuit is basically about cash and trying to embarrass Megan with spicy details. They're planning to handle it all in court. Meanwhile, Rock Nation, who reps Megan, hasn't said anything about this yet. This is an employment claim for money, with no sexual harassment claim filed and with salacious accusations to to attempt to embarrass her. We will deal with this in court. Emilio started working for Megan, whose real name is Megan Pete, as her personal cameraman in 2018 and went full-time in 2019. He stayed on the job until mid-2023. He shared that during a trip to Ibiza in June 2022, after a night out, Megan and one of the women started getting it on in the SUV while he was right there. He told NBC News he felt super awkward and just frozen by the whole thing. The next day, Megan checked if he was in the car during the hookup and and warned him to keep quiet about it. During that same trip, she also made some pretty harsh comments about his weight. Emilio mentioned that when they got back from the trip, Megan changed how she paid him, from a steady monthly rate to a paper task deal where he had to invoice for every job. He says he was supposed to do the same work but started getting fewer gigs, which just added to the whole messed up situation. Emilio Garcia was thinking about quitting his job with Megan the Stallion because she was kind of controlling. The pay wasn't great for all the time he put in, and he wasn't getting enough gigs, according to his lawsuit. He was supposed to work for Megan in June 2023, but the night before the job, Rock Nation told him they didn't need him anymore. While working for Megan, Emilio said he had to put up with constant sexual comments and fat shaming, which really messed with his head. He told NBC News that in the entertainment industry, it's like there's no HR to turn to, so it's tough to know how to stand up for yourself unless you start talking to others who have agents or lawyers. The lawsuit claims that all this drama caused Emilio to lose out on money and other job perks. Plus, he ended up with some physical physical and emotional health issues. He didn't even have basic health insurance while working for her, which made getting the care he needed pretty much impossible. Now he's dealing with anxiety, depression, and physical problems because of the stressful work situation. Emilio's lawyer, Ron Zambrano, said to NBC News that Megan needs to just pay Emilio what she owes him, admit to her actions, and stop the sexual harassment and fat shaming. He added that it was totally out of line for Megan to have sex in the car with Emilio there, calling it not just inappropriate, but definitely illegal. The lawsuit also talks about how Megan treated him like an independent contractor, which meant he couldn't work for anyone else, didn't get overtime, and couldn't take breaks. This misclassification left him without health insurance, which meant he couldn't get necessary health care. Emilio is looking to get a hefty sum, over six figures, covering unpaid wages, interest on those wages, overtime, and other benefits, plus penalties under California labor laws, punitive damages, and his legal costs. Emilio needs to come up with some solid proof for his claims because they won't stick otherwise. But we should not just brush off what he's saying by any means. Megan seems to really blur the lines between professional and personal with her team. Like, there's this video where she's dancing super close with her hairstylist. Sure, he didn't seem to mind, but that's still way out of line for a boss to act with an employee. It shows you that Megan treats her staff more like her buddies. She doesn't hesitate to party hard, dance on them, or do other risque stuff right in front of them because, in her eyes, they're just friends, not employees. But part of the blame's gotta land on her team, too. They go along with it but Megan really needs to watch it. Her actions could easily be seen as harassment or even assault. She doesn't seem to get that, doing stuff that's way too much, like allegedly getting intimate right in front of her cameraman. That's just not okay, consent or not. And then there's the whole fat shaming thing, making for a really nasty work environment. None of that bombshell lawsuit against Lizzo, three former backup dancers are suing the pop superstar, her production company, and her tour's dance instructor, alleging sex and racial harassment.
as well as a hostile work environment. Pop star Lizzo really shocked everyone by announcing she's done with music just months after she denied some serious accusations from her former dance crew. On March 29th, she hit up social media to say she's retiring from the scene. In her post, she talked about how tough it's been dealing with rumors and jokes about her looks and how people who don't even know her are tearing her down and messing with her reputation. Last year, some of her ex-dancers filed a 44-page lawsuit claiming Lizzo, whose real name is Melissa Jefferson, and her production company, Big Girl Big Touring Inc., were all about sexual harassment and weight shaming. Lizzo clapped back at these false allegations on her socials, calling them totally unbelievable and outrageous. But in February, a judge in LA decided not to dismiss the lawsuit, although some claims were tossed out. Here's what went down with the accusations from the dancers, Ariana Davis, Noel Rodriguez, and Crystal Williams. They weren't happy about how they got kicked out of Lizzo's company. They say Lizzo made a big deal about Davis's weight gain and fired her right there after she recorded a meeting because of a health issue. When Rodriguez stood up for Davis, and decided to quit, she said Lizzo came at her pretty aggressively and she thought Lizzo was about to hit her until another dancer stepped in. The dancers also talked about a really weird and uncomfortable vibe while working with Lizzo and her dance captain. They even described a wild night at a strip club in Amsterdam where Lizzo supposedly got people to touch nude performers, catch things the performers launched, and eat bananas in a super inappropriate way. They say Lizzo pushed Davis to touch one of the performers after getting everyone to chant at her and Davis did it just to stop the chant. They also mentioned a time when Lizzo supposedly made one of her security guys get on stage and then his pants were pulled down. The lawsuit says that Lizzo really didn't care about the personal boundaries of her employees or others around her, especially since a lot of them worked for her. The dancers claim they had to go through a really tough re-audition because Lizzo thought they'd been drinking before shows due to their poor performances. Davis said she ended up having an accident because she was too scared to take a bathroom break during a grueling 12-hour rehearsal. When she finally got a chance to change, the wardrobe folks gave her see-through shorts and didn't provide any undergarments, forcing her to finish the rehearsal in front of male crew members who already had a reputation for inappropriate comments. She also mentioned that Lizzo and her choreographer kept making subtle digs about her weight, which Lizzo had noticed before at South by Southwest. This left Davis feeling like she had to justify her weight gain to keep her job, and she ended up revealing her struggle with binge eating disorder, which really took an emotional toll on her. Lizzo offered her some time off from practice, but Davis turned it down because she didn't want to seem weak and unable to keep up with the rest of the crew. The lawsuit really stunned Lizzo's fans, especially since she's known for promoting body positivity and women's rights. A couple of days after the news broke, Lizzo responded, calling the claims exaggerated stories from ex-employees who had been previously warned about their unprofessional behavior on tour. She emphasized her commitment to her music and performances, stating that she sets high standards and sometimes has to make tough calls but never aims to make anyone feel uncomfortable or undervalued. Lizzo Lizzo expressed that she's been portrayed unfairly by some people and the media as a villain, which really hurts her, especially because she's always worked hard to make a positive impact. She denied ever fat shaming her employees and thanked everyone who supported her during this challenging time. The lawsuit also brings up Shirlene Quigley, Lizzo's dance captain, and the company itself, Big Girl Big Touring Inc. It mentions that Quigley often pushed her Christian beliefs onto the dancers, making them uncomfortable, and went as far as publicly discussing Davis's virginity, which was a deeply personal Personal matter without her consent. Quigley also reportedly made negative remarks about those who engaged in premarital sex, despite knowing it clashed with the personal beliefs of some dancers. The lawsuit against Big Girl includes some heavy accusations of racism towards the black women on the dance team, with claims that management called them lazy, unprofessional, and said they had bad attitudes. On February 2, 2024, Judge Mark H. Epstein decided not to dismiss the whole case against Lizzo under California's anti slap statute, which is meant to shut down lawsuits quickly if they're just trying to silence free speech. While the judge did toss out some parts of the lawsuit, like a sexual harassment claim related to a nude photo shoot during the filming of Watch Out for the Big Girls, a claim of disability discrimination involving a dancer who said she was fired after opening up about her mental health, and a claim that Lizzo's team messed with the dancer's chances of getting other jobs, he let the rest of the suite move forward. So as we can see, both Lizzo and Megan Thee Stallion have found themselves embroiled in lawsuits with striking 
striking similarities, particularly involving claims from former team members about the work environments they maintained. Each artist faces allegations of inappropriate and unprofessional behavior. In Megan's case, there are accusations that involve sexual acts in front of employees and fat-shaming comments, while Lizzo's lawsuit includes claims of creating a sexually charged environment and making racially insensitive remarks towards team members. Additionally, both lawsuits highlight issues of workplace harassment, with accusations that each artist fostered a hostile work environment. This includes harassment that allegedly targeted the mental and emotional well-being of the plaintiffs, such as body shaming and public humiliation. Notably, both lawsuits involve elements of body shaming. Megan allegedly made derogatory remarks about an employee's weight, and Lizzo is accused of negatively focusing on a dancer's weight gain. Both artists have also publicly responded to the allegations, denying the claims and suggesting that they are either sensationalized or completely false. They use social media to defend their characters and address the accusations directly. These cases underscore the challenges of managing professional relationships in the spotlight of the entertainment industry, where personal and professional boundaries are often tested, leading to complex legal and public relations issues for those involved. But what are your thoughts on these recent lawsuit-related developments? Let us know all about it down below. All